Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we're gonna take a look at the DJI NEO, a 200 bucks affordable entry-level drone that offers a ton of functionality for its price. But is it worth your money or should you look elsewhere? This video is divided into chapters for a better viewing experience. We're gonna start out from the specs, then test fly it in all of the six different fly modes it has, which is crazy how versatile it is. Then talk about pros and cons, and in the end, we're gonna talk about who should get this drone and who should stay away from it and consider something else. Let's go! Let's talk about specs. The drone is 135 grams of weight, super light, 130 millimeter by 157. So it's very pocketable and roughly the size of a smartphone. It's not foldable, but it's a good thing because they made this frame super light, but at the same time is kind of sturdy and it will resist impacts, no problem. This drone is super safe thanks to the ducks, but you can also add these propeller guards up top so your fingers will never get into the propeller. This is the only port on the drone and is used for charging and for data transfer so you can download the footage. You can also download it on the phone, but it's the only way because there is no SD card slot, which is a bummer. The internal memory is 22 GB, so it will fill up pretty quickly. The camera comes with this plastic protector, which is very nice when you put the drone in your bag. It has a one axis only gimbal. The rest is stabilized electronically. It shoots 4K30 videos, 180p 60 or 180p 30 photos, 12 megapixel, and there is no flat video, color profile or RAW for the photos. Comes with a GPS module in it and on the bottom the usual altitude and position hold sensor. The batteries are lithium ion and they will give you around 18 minutes of flight time or around 20 self-flying shots. Adding this propeller guard will remove one minute from your flight time. This drone comes in two versions, the standalone, which is 200 bucks and has only the drone and one battery, or the fly more combo, which is 350 bucks, but they give you also the radio and a charging hub with two extra batteries. This will charge the batteries simultaneously, which is very nice. Also, a couple of extra propellers. I'm gonna talk about what version should you get at the end of the video. And now it's finally time to check out the six different ways to fly this drone. The first two are the selfie drone mode. You can either do it standalone, but better yet, you should use the DJI Fly app on your phone to unlock extra features and settings. Pressing this button one time, you see the battery level. If you press and keep pressing, you turn on the drone. Pressing this button, you will cycle through all the mods you see here. Follow, drone circle, rocket, spotlight, direction track. If you long press this front button, it will take off and execute the mode. And now we are in follow. The drone is a little bit noisy, as you can hear, but it will follow me. Let's see if we can avoid some uh, branches. No. Okay, so... It doesn't have uh, obstacle avoidance. At least the propellers are strong enough so they cut through the leaves. Let's connect it to the phone so we have more control of what's happening. And also we have a nice preview of the drone camera. And it's actually very, very low latency as well. We tried the follow mode, let's do a drony. Go into the settings and you can change the settings of the mode you selected. And also it will show you a preview of what's gonna happen. 10 meters and rise up in the sky. Let's try. And the nice thing about connecting the phone is you can talk to the microphone and it will clean up the audio you recorded. Probably you don't even hear the drone as well. So it goes away and then it comes back. Put your hand and it lands. So with your phone connected, you have access to voice controls. Hey, fly. Got it. Circle. Circle. Circle, we do a circle around your orbit. You can select how far you want the drone to go. Then you have rocket mode, which basically goes all the way up in the sky and rotates. If you wanna, I don't know, lay on the ground, 
I don't want to do that because I'm gonna make this green, but yeah. Then you have spotlight mode, which the drone basically behaves like a tripod, but it doesn't really follow you. It stays there, it just tracks you and rotates. This is nice if you need someone to record you talking, but you are alone. Direction track will track you, but keeping the angle you take off at. As you can see, I can move sideways and the drone will move sideways as well. This is very risky because the drone doesn't have sensors, so if there is something in the middle, you will hit it, basically. But it's nice to do this kind of, of shots. It is not incredibly precise. The last mode is manual control, where you can use your phone as a virtual joystick to control your drone. This is very, very useful. Take off. I am perfectly able to control the drone, just like a regular drone at this point. The range is kind of limited to like 30 meters. Let's take a picture. And that's all for the selfie drone mode. Another way you can use this drone is the regular drone mode. So you need either the DJI RC2, this is the RC1, it's not compatible, the 2 is, is the same basically, only has antennas on the top. Or the DJI RC N2 or N3. This is the N3, but you will always need to connect your phone to it to see what's happening. They do the same thing, but this is more convenient because it's an integrated screen. Okay, ready to take off. With a rear radio, you have much better control of the drone. And also more range to do cool drone shots. But the image quality is not ideal, really. Let's take a picture. The drone is not crazy fast, it goes maximum 25 km per hour in sport mode. You can put it in cinematic mode, C mode is the slowest, so it will give you better control of what you're doing. Normal mode ups the speed a little bit and sport mode goes the fastest. With the radio control you have access to a couple more quick shots, they are the helix and the boomerang. Let's try it. Three, two, Be careful because one. the drone will fly sideways and it's a nice way to break it. It also goes quite fast, please don't crash, it will be very hard, <laughs> okay? This was a nice quick shot, I wish it was in the standalone drone. Let's try the boomerang before the battery runs out. Please don't crash again, I have to monitor it closely because I'm scared. Battery level is low. Aircraft will return to the home point in Okay, okay, it's not flying far, luckily. And that's it. Very nice. And that's all for the normal drone mode. The last way of flying this drone is the FPV mode. And for that, you need the DJI goggles 3 specifically. All the other goggles are not compatible. And to control this drone, you can either choose the DJI Motion Controller 3. This is a more intuitive kind of way to control the FPV drone. Or if you want a more serious and full manual mode, you need the DJI FPV Controller 3. Let's start using the motion controller. This is uh, kind of more intuitive because you can just press the button forward and the drone will go. It's a fun way of flying your drone FPV. Now I never fly like that, so excuse me if I'm not the best pilot ever with this, but we still can probably follow some chicken. Boom, and get some very nice chase shot. Wow, it was a very nice shot. So the issue is you have 4K30 if you want 4K or 180p60, but it's 180p then. So there is no optimal thing. 4K30 feels a little bit choppy when you fly. Let's put it in sport mode and see how fast it goes. 30 km per hour in sport mode. Oh, <laughs> wow, I stopped. <laughs> Crazy. Another super cool feature of the motion controller is you can use the head tracking of the drone. So where you look, the drone is gonna look. This is super, super fun once you fly. A little bit disorientating, but it's totally, totally fun. So the ball tells you where you're going and the crosshair tells you where you're looking. It's kind of weird to fly like this. But for sure, 
it can be a nice way of changing camera angles while you fly. I mean, everything is going to look a little bit uh, wobbly, probably. But for an exploration type of flight, this is a ton of, fly, a ton of fun. It's a shame they don't allow it on the regular FPV controller 3 because it's just software. Just like the Avata 2, also the Neo has the easy acro modes. So you have the slide, which is basically go left or right and it will drift a little bit. Then you have the 180 drift, which if you have a subject and you perform it, it will rotate the drone and keep going backwards. Like that. And then lastly, we have the flip, which I'm curious to see what, that, what it does. Okay, it flips, of course, while you're flying. It does a barrel roll. This is not the best drone to do that. It's weak. But yeah, it stops for a moment. It does the, <laughs> it does the trick and then it keeps going. Don't do it too close to stuff. It's fun, but all of these functions are kind of gimmicky in my opinion, especially the flip. And finally, time to fly with the DJI FPV Remote Controller 3. With this radio, you have the perfect hybrid between the normal drone mode, where you can uh, fly, it will tilt, of course, but you have uh, the horizon steady, lock, rock steady, or just like I do, record in four thirds and stabilize with Gyroflow, which is an external software which stabilizes amazingly. We are flying in normal mode, let's put it in sport mode. And just like before, it goes maximum 30 km per hour in this mode, which is fine for a drone this small. Actually, when you are low to the ground, it seems like it decreases the maximum speed a little bit. Follow the chicken again. Time to put it in manual mode. And finally, we are in the real FPV mode. In this mode, you can go as fast as you want up to it looks like 60 kilometers per hour which is not bad for such a, a tiny drone it doesn't fly amazingly i'm gonna tell you that but hey <laughs> this is not the drone to do flips and stuff it doesn't like it so don't use it for that but just like also the avata 2 is not the drone for flipping but i'm gonna go high and you can do whatever you want up to a point because then the drone goes a little bit crazy. But this is the best way to get fast and uh, really, really cool looking shots. Except it doesn't fly amazingly. So yes, it can do a, a little bit of everything in this drone, but it doesn't excel at anything, you know? And that's it for the FPV flying. Time to talk about pros and cons, starting with the pros. Of course, it's a super light and compact drone, which makes it, first of all, sub 250, so you can fly in many places around the world without needing a registration. Second, it's super safe around people. It is the most affordable recent drone from DJI, and it's also super versatile, so you get a lot for your money. You can try this drone in various different settings, as a selfie drone, as a normal drone, as a FPV drone. You can dip your feet into many disciplines all at once with this drone. And lastly, it is one of the easiest drones to use and one of the quickest as well, because you just take it out of the pocket, select your mode, and it flies. It comes back in your hand, you didn't have to connect your phone, connect your radio, learn how to fly. It does everything by itself and it lands back in your hand, so it can be used by everybody. Let's talk about cons. First of all, the image quality is barely decent in my opinion. It's fine to record some moments, but really for social media use, you have to crop in and you lose a lot of definition. Really, the dynamic range is not great. They could have put a better camera in it. Second thing I don't like, the storage. 22 gigabytes are not that much but not having a SD card I really don't like because sometimes you just want to be able to take out the SD card, put it in your computer, record for longer. Maybe you are flying FPV, doing some sketchy stuff. You want to be able to fly, take the recording out, save it in your pocket, put in a new fresh SD card and try again. So if you lose the drone, at least one of your videos is saved. Three, being a selfie drone with a lot of automated modes and not having side and back sensors is a con for me because many people many beginners are gonna fly maybe select 10 meters droney and there is something in the middle the drone is gonna crash 
4. It's very versatile, but it doesn't excel at anything. It's mediocre at best. As a selfie drone, yes, it's fine, it works. As a regular drone, the image quality and the movements are not the best. And as a FPV drone, okay, it's the only FPV drone from DJI, it's up to 150, but it flies kind of bad. And again, the image quality is pulling it back. And to end this video, let's talk about who should get it and who should stay away from it. So, you should get it if you're looking, of course, for an affordable selfie drone to record memories. This is a very, very nice option and probably the best out there. Because for 200 bucks, it does its job pretty nicely. The only competition this drone has is from Hover Air. This is the Hover Air X1 and it's probably the same specs, but it's more expensive and it doesn't have all this uh, versatility, like using it in FPV or using it as a normal drone, you cannot do it with this drone. So, this one wins. Also, this drone is great as a present, in my opinion, because it's affordable and will get kids or adults or people who never touch drones into drones. It's fun and it can be used very, very, very easily. So, great present. It can be a very nice option if you want to learn how to fly drones from scratch. It does it in a safe manner and it can teach you a little bit of FPV, a little bit of regular drone flying. And when you don't use this function anymore because you progressed, you can still keep using it as a selfie drone. And of course, if you already have a lot of DJI gear, so you have the Avata 2, you have a Mini 4, this drone is compatible with all of those stuff. It can be a nice backup fun drone to have. You should not buy this drone if, first of all, you want a selfie drone, but maybe you are a creator, you get paid to create content, and you care about image quality. Maybe you can spend a little bit extra money for an Overair X1 Pro or Pro Max. The Pro Max has sensor, has a good image quality, has a SD card, and it works really, really nicely as a selfie drone. It only does that, but it does it good. But it costs 600 bucks. So with one of these, you buy three of these. Two. If you're looking for a regular drone with better image quality, maybe to bring on holiday or maybe even to do a little bit of work, good photos, this is not recommended. At the same price, you can get a used DJI Mini 2 with three batteries. The radio control is a much better drone. Three axis gimbal, 4K footage. It has the quick shots, so it's a much better regular drone and can be used kind of a selfie drone. So that's my recommendation. Three, if you want to learn FPV or you want a good FPV drone, don't get this one. Because after you spend 700 bucks for the goggles and for the radio, this is a bottleneck and it doesn't give you good quality. For 200 bucks more, you get the DJI Avata 2 and that's so much better. It will get you good videos and it flies much better. Or you can save a lot of money and get the used Avata 1, which is still a very good option and better than this one at FPV. One final recommendation. I feel like you should get the standalone version of this drone, not the Fly More Combo, because being a selfie drone, you don't use it that much during the day. You can charge it up with a power bank and that's it. The radio controller is kind of not useless, but with this drone is kind of wasted, in my opinion. If you want to spend 350 bucks, consider something else. And that's all for today. I still feel like this is a very good entry-level selfie drone, but if it had the Avata 2 camera, it would have been so much better and really, really recommended top killer drone. Instead, it's just mediocre. As always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what do you think about my thoughts on this drone. And as always, if you want to support the channel, click on the links down in the description below. You help this channel a lot. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.